I'm a dermatologist and today we are talking alternatives to Accutane. Accutane can be a great medication for the treatment of acne, but some people just are not good candidates to take it and some people have experienced significant side effects by taking this medication so they cannot continue on it and did not see clearance of their acne. So we're going to dive into what is Accutane and what if you don't want to take it or can't take it, what are the things you can turn to in order to help clear up your skin if you're suffering from moderate to severe acne. Let's dive in and explore. Quickly, a little background on Accutane. It is a synthetic version of vitamin A. So we take this pill once or twice a day, and on average, a course of Accutane is about six months. The most common side effects from taking acne are dry skin, dry lips, dry eyes, and about 10 to 15% of patients do get achy, joint pains, and muscle aches. Some people experience a little GI upset, and there are rumors on the internet of things like depression and inflammatory bowel disease. So far in population-based studies, looking at the rates of depression and inflammatory bowel disease, they are no different in patients that take Accutane and don't take Accutane. But that doesn't mean there aren't anecdotal reports out there of people who took this medication and experienced either depression or bowel problems. But in general, on a population level, we can't say that Accutane causes those problems. So when we look at the right candidates to treat acne with Accutane, these patients are typically going to have moderate to severe acne deeper cystic lesions that put them at risk of scarring. It may be located on the face, but also on the chest, back, or shoulders. And they've often failed many other over-the-counter and prescription treatments. And we often use Accutane as kind of a last resort in these patients when nothing else seems to be working. Now, I will tell you that I have taken Accutane myself and had no significant problems on it. I've also prescribed it almost every day of my career and a number of my staff have taken it and patients tend to do very well. There's very few instances of people that are quitting Accutane because it was too overwhelming with side effects for them. I can probably count under 10 people in my 10 years of prescribing Accutane that had a significant problem with it. It is a serious medication, but when you're with a board certified dermatologist that has experience in monitoring for side effects, you can have a very successful course. Now my goal in this video is not to convince you to take Accutane, but to provide you with the alternatives if you don't want to or can't take Accutane. So we're gonna dive into some of these options and explore. Starting with topical retinoid medications. These are by prescription. You can get retinol over the counter, but if you're dealing with moderate to severe acne, they're probably not gonna be effective. You are going to need to look at prescription treatment options, and these are going to be retinoid medications like tretinoin, which is available at several different strengths. There's also retinoids called adapalene. One of them, called Differin, is available over the counter, and one that is stronger is available by prescription. There's also tazeratine, and we tend to regard that as the strongest retinoid available. It does tend to have more risk of dryness and skin irritation while you're taking it. There's another brand name called Acleaf, and this one is also approved for back acne as well as facial acne. I think there's a little bit lower risk of dryness with this one, but everybody has a different experience with it. So topical retinoids can be a great adjunct if you have moderate to severe acne, but in my experience, they often don't lead to complete clearance in individuals with really challenging cases of acne who might be candidates for Accutane or Isotretinoin. Next up on the list is oral antibiotics. If you were proposed Accutane as a treatment option, there's a pretty good chance you've already been through the treatment of acne with oral antibiotics. The most common ones that we use are doxycycline and minocycline. They have a low risk of allergic reactions and they don't interact with a lot of other medications. The main risk of these medications is stomach upset. And if you lay down too quickly after taking them, they can cause serious heartburn. Another thing to be aware of with doxycycline and minocycline is that they can slightly increase your risk of sun sensitivity, meaning you're more likely to get a sunburn if you're out. So if you're on these medications or you're considering treatment with them, it is really important to exercise good sun protection with hats, long sleeve shirts, or sunscreen. It's important to note that we don't prescribe these antibiotics necessarily to kill the bacteria that cause acne. 
As a side effect, they are found to be very anti-inflammatory in the skin. And so when you have bacteria and oil glands that are plugged up, your body responds to those things with inflammation. And doxycycline and minocycline help to reduce that inflammatory response, meaning you're less likely to get deep pimples, cystic papules, and less likely to have more significant infections as a result, less likely to experience scarring. And so I find that patients do really well on these medications, but it's often not a very durable response, meaning when they stop, often the acne does come back. In some circumstances, we can use these to help suppress that inflammation while somebody gets on a really good topical regimen. And then when they come off of the antibiotic, they're able to maintain clearance just with their topicals. The next alternative to Accutane are going to be hormonal treatments. And these can vary in their type and usage, but the most common is going to be in women for birth control pills. So there are a number of oral contraceptive pills that are approved specifically for the treatment of acne, as well as, of course, prevention of pregnancy. But what they do is they help to lower the effect of the types of hormones that can lead to acne in the skin. The sebaceous glands or the oil glands in the face have hormone receptors on them. And so when we can alter the function of those hormone receptors by either lowering the hormone levels, making them lower and more consistent across the month, or by blocking those hormone receptors with other medications like spironolactone, we can see a great reduction in cystic acne. Hormonal acne tends to be focused around the chin and jawline in that lower third of the face. They're deep cystic lesions that are often painful and never come to a head. And so, Oral contraceptive pills can be great for some people, but they do come with the risk of side effects and some people just don't like taking them. Spironolactone, as I mentioned, is a blood pressure pill and it is one of those things that can help to block those androgen receptors on your oil glands. We use this at much lower doses than we would if we were using spironolactone to treat blood pressure. And so at lower doses, it takes a while for it to kick in, but after six to eight weeks, many females with hormonal acne do see a significant reduction in the number of cystic lesions that they are getting. And this medicine has helped a number of my patients to avoid going on Accutane. If you are considering taking spironolactone, you need to have a discussion with your doctor to make sure that it is safe for you, that you don't have kidney problems because it does work in the kidney and it can change your electrolytes slightly. But in younger, healthy people, I've never seen that be a problem. I do occasionally check blood work in my patients who are over 40 and on spironolactone. One more hormonal treatment that has been new to the market in the last couple of years is called Winlevy. And this is a topical cream that is supposed to work similar to spironolactone. It needs to be used twice a day. It's got a short half-life, so if you're only using it once a day, you're not gonna get a lot of efficacy from it. But this is a cream that you apply to the skin twice a day, and it helps to impact those hormone receptors at the oil glands, and for some people can lead to a significant reduction in acne. I haven't seen this by itself be a miracle worker, but I have seen people who got improvement with their acne in other methods use Winlevy to help take them to totally clear. So it's kind of that last push to get them across the finish line, so to speak. The next line of treatments available are topical antibiotics and medications in that category. So these are gonna be things like topical erythromycin, topical clindamycin, and they will directly kill the bacteria that cause acne. One of the challenges with these medications is antibiotic resistance, however. There are most acne-causing bacteria that are now resistant to erythromycin, so we don't tend to prescribe that very frequently. Clindamycin does have more efficacy, but if you're using it for a while, it's pretty common that your particular bacteria will find a way to be resistant to clindamycin and it will no longer work. There is a trick, however, if you're using clindamycin, you should also be using benzoyl peroxide at least one time per day. And that doesn't have to be at the same time as clindamycin. You can use it, you know, a, a benzoyl peroxide cleanser in the morning and your clindamycin lotion at nighttime. But as long as you're using benzoyl peroxide once a day with the days that you're using clindamycin, you will prevent the development of antibiotic resistance. So that is a really important thing to be aware of. If you're using clindamycin, you need to be getting benzoyl peroxide on of some kind in order to make sure your clindamycin continues to work over the long term. 
Now, a lot of those medications you may have tried already if Accutane was proposed for you. And when I get to this point with patients and they've tried all these things and they don't or they can't go on Accutane, then we start to look at chemical peels and microdermabrasion. These are things that are gonna to help to exfoliate the skin and sometimes help to remove excess oil and unplug those oil glands. So salicylic acid is a great exfoliator that does do a great job to remove excess oil from the skin. You can also use lighter chemical peels like glycolic acid, mandelic acid, and lactic acid to help gently exfoliate the skin. And if it's done with the supervision of a board certified dermatologist, you can even get to much higher concentrations of these peels, but that should be done in an office setting under supervision to make sure that you're not going to injure yourself by doing too strong of a chemical peel or leaving it on too long. As a benefit, these chemical peels and microdermabrasion, depending on the intensity or the strength, can also help to improve acne scars, which is something most of the other things we've talked about don't really do. You can get a small improvement in the appearance of scars with retinol, but true deeper scars are just not gonna budge much with retinol alone. Next up is laser and light therapy devices. So these are going to help to target the bacteria that cause acne or help to target your sebaceous glands. And there's a few different devices on the market that work in different ways. Recently, I read a paper that compared red light therapy to Accutane and found that patients using a cream that contained ALA or aminolevulinic acid plus red light therapy at 633 nanometers got just as clear as patients who were taking Accutane. I'm going to review that study in another video in greater depth so we can walk through the nuances of it, but that particular protocol was very promising when it comes to the treatment of moderate to severe cystic acne. There's a couple of devices on the market now that are lasers that target the oil glands in the skin, and these are called AvaClear and Acure. And they target the sebaceous glands, they can actually shrink them down, and the companies are promising results that are similar to Accutane with just three or four treatments. The longer some of these have been on the market, we're seeing maybe they don't have the same durability as Accutane, but there's no systemic side effects when taking these. You're not ingesting a medication, and if you have the budget to do these, these as a maintenance treatment, they can really help to clear up acne, to prevent scarring, and give you clear, beautiful skin. And the last thing that we'll talk about is diet and lifestyle changes. There's a little bit of controversy here. Now, I personally believe that our diet is a huge contributor to the amount of acne that we're seeing. We're seeing more and more adults come into the clinic with cystic acne, which wasn't the case necessarily 20, 30 years ago. Our diets and the foods available, especially in the United States, are not necessarily going to be the best for our health. And when we eat more refined carbohydrates, foods with a high glycemic index diet that really boost our blood sugar quickly, we can see that that is inflammatory and may contribute to acne in some individuals. There's also some concerns with dairy causing Accutane, but the only studies that we have really linking dairy to acne are around skim milk. We didn't see the same effect when using 2% or whole milk, for example. So if you do consume a lot of skim milk and you have acne, it may be worthwhile reevaluating that and switching to a different milk or like a plant-based milk. Generally, if you can switch to a more whole foods diet where you're consuming whole foods, plants, vegetables, fruits, and meats that are grass fed, ideally, those types of things are going to be healthier for you. Less processed foods generally means clearer skin for most people, but it's not the fix for everybody. And this is an area where as time goes on, I think we'll have more precise advice that comes out, but you can keep a food journal and find out when your acne flares, what kinds of things were you eating? Were you super stressed at the time? Were you underslept? All of that can play a role in your skin. So diet and lifestyle things absolutely impact your skin. And there are things there under your control that may help to improve your acne. Now with all of this, some of these are prescription medications or should only be done with the supervision of a board certified dermatologist. And so I would encourage you to find a dermatologist in your area and look at all the treatment options available to you. If you'd like to learn more about Accutane in particular, I'll do a whole video on that. Just let me know in the comments. 
but Accutane can be a good medication and I think it's worthwhile having that discussion with a dermatologist to make sure that any concerns that you have are properly addressed and that you are properly informed when you make the decision to go forward with Accutane or not to take Accutane, which is perfectly valid, but you should know all of the questions and have them answered by a dermatologist so you know that you're making the right decision for you, for your health, for your skin. The next video that I'm going to be doing is breaking down Accutane versus red light therapy. So hit the subscribe button and that video will be coming up next week.